Today on Exploring Scotland's History, we're on the Isle of Bute. It's a very almost tropical island. It is so well shaded by Arran, Ayrshire and Argyll. Traces of settlement in Mesolithic times have been found on the Isle of Bute. We will investigate that. For now we're going to have a look at Rossi, a typical seaside town I suppose, but a very beautiful Victorian example of a seaside town. Welcome to Exploring Scotland's History. With the introduction of steamships and the trip down the water, the 1800s, late 1800s, saw Rossi operating as the second busiest steamer pier on the Clyde for by Greenock. In 1913, up to 100 steamer ships were calling at Rossi alone on a daily basis. I can see the ferry heading out now. A tram route bisected the island and boarding houses and hotels were in demand. In fact, this week we are staying in quite a unique location for a couple of days. The Glenburn Hotel is a 134 room edifice and it started life as Scotland's first hydropathic hotel in 1843. A bit of a difference from the Open Hydro, which really didn't get off the ground. I will put a link to the Hydro in Open its video, as it gives more of the processes involved in a hydropathic hotel. The original building was drawn by the architect, David Hamilton. He was known for designing the facade of the modern school of art in Glasgow. He was also known as the grandfather of Madeline Smith the famous Edinburgh lady killer. In the beginning of the 1890s, the hydro, unfortunately, like quite a few around the place, caught fire. John McLean Crawford saw the rebuild of the hydro in 1892-1893. That chimney we see, that's actually part of the original hydro. A resident during that fire and Mr. Madole claims that he lost £300 cash that was burnt to a crisp inside his room. Now, in today's terms, that's £17,000. What was he doing with that amount of money? Sounds a bit dodgy to me. Nineteen thirty-six saw the transformation of this hydro into the beautiful hotel we see today. This is Butte Museum, really, really worth a visit. There are so many amazing exhibits. I'm not going to bore you with like randomly panning around the museum because there will be parts of the museum you will see in all the videos about Butte. We have here another first for Butte. In fact, another first for Scotland. This originally was the first aquarium in Scotland. It would have held 100,000 gallons of seawater and 40,000 gallons of fresh water in its heyday. After its use as an aquarium, it was obviously the sensible thing to turn into a swimming bath. And it stayed a swimming bath right until the 1980s. It's residential now, and I have to say it's beautifully kept. 
This part of the street is called Battery Place and the first volunteer artillery battery uh, to help protect Rossi Harbour was here. Um, it wasn't against the First World War or the Second World War defences. It was actually in case Napoleon thought he'd be smart on trying to come up here and invade Rossi. He didn't. Had he attempted it, they would have been prepared. Rossi is a royal borough and every lamppost along the front is a reminder of this fact, except for this one. This signifies the house was occupied by the provost. A provost is quite similar to a Lord Mayor and performs similar roles. The port of Rossi started to grow in the 1700s due to the fishing industry, namely herring, becoming quite prolific. The first steamer to land into the port was the Comet. I have mentioned the Comet a few times and how it came to a sticky end on my history Facebook page. Local stories would say that the Butte Residents fled inland when they saw the comet arriving, belching its black smoke into the harbour. I could well believe it. They would get used to the steamers quick enough and make a pretty penny from the booming Victorian age of going down the water. This is the cabman's rest and it's dated 1874. I'm presuming this is where the guys hung out in between paddle steamers. There wouldn't have been much of a gap, I would imagine, in order to get people onto the right steamer head in the right direction, especially if they were steaming. In 1826, it was reported that three fishermen spotted a mermaid down on the coast here. But what was lurking behind her was much more scary. Apparently, it had the body of a man, the head of a beast. I'm thinking imbibing on whiskey. Who knows? One of the old steamships allegedly had a poltergeist on board. In 1899, the captain blamed a crew member who had drowned overboard days earlier for knocks and rattles during the night keeping the crew awake. He also accused the poor dead crewman of throwing a pan lid at him with an unseen hand, of course. Built in 1899 for the sum of £530, this stunning and elaborate design served men only. I'll send Martin in to film. And that's him coming out. I didn't risk the gents' toilets today. Victorian toilets came about with the steamships really here. It turns out that even though drinking on a Sunday in Scotland was forbidden in those days, drinking on a steamship wasn't. Hence, your steaming has clearly come from those heady days of the paddle steamers in and out of Rossi, then going and having a few grams too many and then disappearing off into the Victorian toilets. Not so lucky for the women though. There weren't any toilets for women in Victorian times. Women were not expected to be out of the house for long enough to require a public convenience. Times have changed. Yes, I did go into the gents' Victorian toilets in Walsey to make sure that I got some nice shots. I do have to say, 
how cool are the glass cisterns? Wow. Now having a short walk at the beginning of the Esplanade. The Esplanade began construction in around 1870 and a familiar face along the Esplanade was Granny Dees. She had a fish cart. Lucky for her, the Marquis at the time, in Victorian times, he felt it important to help out widows. So he had set her up with her little business with her fish cart because her husband had been a sailor and he had drowned at sea in the 1850s. But the Esplanade goes for some distance right into the centre of Rossi. While we're talking about the joys of the Esplanade, obviously that encompasses the Victorian toilets. The rocky outcrop that the public toilets have been landed on wasn't such a pleasant place to be historically. The Gallows Craig, as it was called, was right at the bottom of Gallows Gate and that was where criminals would meet their maker if they had got a death sentence. It's also where people were tried for witchcraft. In 1662 there were four such witchcraft trials. A fifth alleged witch, Janet McNichol, managed to escape the island and kept in hiding in Kilmarnock for 12 years. After 12 years she returned to the Isle of Butte. What possessed her, goodness knows. But in 1673 she did. She was captured, tried, accused of consorting with the devil in Halloween of 1661, 12 years earlier, found guilty, hanged by the neck and burnt to death. Whew. Horrid. This is Alexander Bannatyne Stewart and he was born in 1836. He was known with affection for his benefactions that he bestowed on Butte. He died in London in 1880. Built in 1924 as a winter garden, this building has a distinct Art Nouveau style. It had a dual purpose in the Second World War as it was used as a military mess. Then it housed the Rossi entertainers. They kept the spirits up of the military and civilians equally. It is now the tourist information centre for the island. And that's all that remains of an attempt for sort of an outdoor swimming thing. Rossi wasn't just as successful as the likes of Gurek that still has an outdoor swimming area and the various abandoned Lidos that did last for quite some time before falling into disrepair. They were actually built between the wars the architect Thomas Beveridge also designed the swimming baths in the old aquarium that we discussed earlier. The dressing rooms would have had attendants in their day.
This impressive building has served the people of Butte as a toll booth and a sheriff's court from 1687. Although most of what we see today are alterations carried out in the mid 1800s. So we're now walking past Rossi Castle. It would have originally been built in the 1200s, but obviously there would have been various strengthening works done over the years. The castle is currently closed for a wee bit of refurb, but we'll try and get some nice shots of it for you. It's a really quite pretty part of town. It was surrendered to Hakan, the Danish king, in 1263. After the Battle of Largs, however, it was returned to the Scottish Crown. It really is quite an interesting castle. Very much so because it is a fully circular castle, which we don't often see in Scotland. The change in power benefited William Wallace. He instantly gained 600 men under Sir John Stuart to fight at the Battle of Falkirk. Unfortunately, none of them would return. They all fell to Edward, Hammer of the Scots. Robert the Bruce gave the castle to the Stuarts and it would become quite an important centre of power. The Earl of Lennox also occupied the castle during the horrid rough wooing involving Henry VIII. A busy castle, it was used by Cromwellian troops in 1650. In a failed rising in 1685 by the 9th Duke of Argyll against James VII, the castle was left pretty much uninhabitable. The third Marquess of Butte restored the castle in the heyday of Victorian tourism in the area. That's why everything looks quite manicured. This may seem very surprising to you, but this castle has a ghost. Some people claim she's a green lady and some people claim she's a white lady. What she does do is scream about the battlements in the middle of the night. Those that believe in all these green and white and grey lady ghosts that roam around castles have identified this one as Lady Isabel. It's said that she took her own life in a Viking raid and she did not want to be betrothed to said Viking. There is a step known in the castle as the Bloody Stair and apparently that's Lady Isabel's blood stain and it will not come out. Butte, Rossi, has been a royal borough for quite some time and it's very obvious in the street names. Victoria Street, Princess Street, Princess Street, Queen Street, yeah, very subtle.
The Zamboroni story on the Isle of Butte is an interesting one. I spoke to the current owner of this long-standing family-run outlet to learn he had held the business for 46 years. The family have held the business for over 100. His ancestor, Cesar, left Genoa in 1906, stowed away on a London bound ship and earned his money working restaurants. His brother would join them and they eventually settled in Scotland. World War II was difficult for Italian immigrants. Those that weren't called up had to suspend business and report to the police daily. Some even spent the war in British prisoner of war camps. After the war and eventual cessation of sugar rationing, the Zavaronis on Butte could build on not only their hot food business, but also branch out into ice cream. The food, I have to say, is recommended. It's delicious and it's traditionally wrapped up in newspaper. Mm. And all wrapped in newspaper. It should be. This is Rossi High Kirk and St Mary's Chapel. I will be making a separate video on this site. Look out for it in the future. Millport has Crocodile Rock. Rossi has Snake Rock. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you to everyone who has supported the channel via the coffee link. I'll pop it in a pinned comment below. Until next time, thank you for watching.